Namaste Sadhguru. Namaskar. Uh, I'm Harshita. Mm -hmm. My question to you is, what do you think about the concept of hell or heaven? See, those who have made a hell out of themselves <laughs> are always aspiring to go to heaven. <laughs> yes. If I… if I am sitting here and uh, I'm blissed out totally, look at my eyes, it looks like I'm always stoned. <laughs> yes, never touched a substance, but this is the most complex chemical factory in the world, is that so? Do you agree with me? The question is only, are you a great CEO or a lousy CEO of this chemical factory? If you were a great CEO, you would keep this all the time, bliss, doubt, right chemistry. If you are a lousy CEO, you produce bad chemistry and you think it's because of this one or that one or that one <laughs> So, for some reason people are feeling miserable. Their chemical factory is not going the way they want. They can call it sadness, they can call it misery, they can call it depression. So, when this is feeling like hell, we hope that somewhere when we go up there, <laughs> that everything will be fantastic. Harjita means, you know, blissed out <laughs> So, this happened, this happened in Alabama. You know Alabama state? It's a special state. It's a different kind of state, hardcore religious state. So in a Sunday school, a Sunday school teacher was going all out, full rhetoric, full force. And uh, unfortunately, the audience were not like you, they were all tiny tots. It's a catch them young policy. In his full rhetoric, he was going and children were sitting like this. Suddenly he stopped for dramatic impact. He stopped and he said, what do you have to do to go to heaven? Little Mary in the front bench stood up and said, if I mop the church floor every Sunday morning, I will go to heaven. Absolutely! Another little girl out there said, if, my, if I share my pocket money with my less privileged friend, I will go to heaven, correct? Another boy said, if I help people who are in need, I will go to heaven, correct? Little Tommy in the back bench stood up and said, you got to die first <laughs> Well, that's a qualification. If you want to go to heaven, you got to die first. So when you die, depending on your culture, we will either bury you or burn you or cut you and throw you to the birds. Yes, one of these things we will do, depending on your culture. So one thing is very clear, you will put your body back into the earth and it's a very eco-friendly thing to do. So you left your body and went to heaven. So uh, what is in heaven? In Hindu heaven, food is very good. If you are a foodie, you must go to Hindu heaven. <laughs> Nala himself will cook personally for you. He's the greatest chef. If you go to another kind of heaven, white-gowned ladies will float around in the clouds. If you like that kind of ambience, you go there. If you go to another heaven, you will have virgin problems. If that's what you're looking for, you go there. But. You went there without the body. What do you do with good food and virgins, I'm asking? Hello? You don't have a body? These are all bodily problems, isn't it? No body, what do you do with food and virgins? In the Hindu way of life, there is a thing up there in heaven, there is an Akshaya Patra. How much ever you eat, food will always be full. Well, when you go without a body, food will always remain full in the vessel <laughs> and they will always remain virgins <laughs> So, uh, 
we have been doing this for a long time. This was one simple way. You must understand the managerial skills of the traditional people. This was a way of managing humanity. You're miserable, you… don't worry, when you go there, everything will be okay. <laughs> so less. So if it is a psychologist saying these things, it's okay. But you really made them believe everything is going to be better somewhere, you can mess up your life here, that's not good. Somebody is in deep state of suffering, don't worry, when you go and sit in God's lap, everything will be okay. It's a psychological tool, it's fine in… when people are in extreme states, but don't brand it and sell it everywhere because it's not going to work like that. So, now heavens are collapsing in people's minds. Why there is such an increase of consumption of alcohol and drugs on the planet is mainly because still people are not articulating it, but in their minds heavens are collapsing. How many of you are thinking, one day when I go to heaven everything will be fantastic? Not many of you, I'm sure. But in the previous or the previous generation, if you had looked, the numbers were quite significant. So heavens are obviously collaps collapsing in human mind because if you ask three questions, all the three heavens will collapse. Yes. So now once human intellect became active, inevitably it lasts questions. If you ask questions, these things will collapse. So people are trying to have alternatives right here, that they're getting drunk and drugged right here. To be healthy, they need chemicals. To be peaceful, they need chemicals. To be joyful, they need chemicals. For everything, they need chemicals. I want you to know this, seventy percent of U.S. population is on prescription medication. The most affluent nation on the planet. Why does individuals and societies seek affluence? Because the first step of affluence is choice of food choice of nourishment. The second step of affluence is choice of lifestyles. The most incredible variety of food is in front of you and enormous lifestyle choices are there and in this society, seventy percent of the people are on pharmaceutical, uh, you know, prescription medication. This clearly shows if you do economic development without also cultivating human consciousness, our wealth will become our biggest problem. So we are still on the threshold of economic development. This is the time where we have to invest in evolving human consciousness. So if individual evolution in terms of becoming conscious doesn't happen, you will see ninety percent of the population will fall into chemicals. When they fall into chemicals, I'm not talking about this as a moral uh, uh, thing. If ninety percent of the human population goes on constant usage of chemicals, the next generation that we produce will be a generation which will be much less than who we are and that's a crime against humanity. Every generation, the next generation that comes must be at least one notch better than who we are. If we produce a generation less than us, then we have committed a crime against humanity, we have taken humanity backwards and that is what will happen if chemical usage multiplies and it is going wild. This is the time to raise consciousness, that's why we are here with you. <clears throat> to… to blow your mind without cocaine <laughs>